being 7 o'clock, I'm going to open our um, January 16th meeting. Um, we have a 7 o'clock, I'm just going to go right into the public hearing, we'll be bills and everything after. Um, we have a 7 o'clock um, public hearing um, for Zero Point Energy in accordance with MGL Chapter 41, Section 81-T in the Charlton Planning Board Subdivision Regulations, Section 3.3.12. The Charlton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, January 16, 2019 at 7 p.m. Um, on the application of JF, JMF and B Realty, LLC, PO Box 136, Charlton City, Mass, 01508. In Mark and Tammy Mitchell, PO Box 452, Charlton City, Mass, 01508 requesting approval of a definitive subdivision plan on property located off Brookfield Road assesses map 16 block A lot 2 and 5 proposed Mitchell Way is a cul-de-sac of approximately 350 feet in length and serves two lots proposed McDougal Way in a cul-de-sac of approximately 190 feet in length and also serves two lots the applicant has requested several waivers of the board's regulations the purpose of the plan is to maintain zoning protection in order to build a solar farm. Um, said property is zoned agricultural. Jason you boys from the engineering survey um, representing Zero Point Energy. Um, the property is on the uh, intersection, the corner of Brookfield Road and Oswood Road. Brookfield Road running right through here, and Oswood Road comes up through here. Um, you probably remember we were in here with this site plan uh, a few months back for the, the solar arrays. Uh, we did file a preliminary subdivision, and this, this is filing the definitive within uh, seven, seven or nine months, seven months. Seven months. Um, from that to the middle of the continue to lock the, lock the zone. Um, they are under construction currently already with the solar arrays. Shows um, Brookfield Road is down from here. Um, Osgood is actually a little, little ways further down. Um, so we're looking to basically develop this into two separate subdivisions. Uh, this one would be McDougal Way. This would be Mitchell Way. Uh, this one's about 300 feet to the back. This one's about 190 feet to the back. Uh, so we have Lot A and Lot B. Lot B is 19 acres. Lot A is three acres. Both of them will have frontage off of the, the new proposed right of way. Uh, down here, again, we have lot one and lot two. Frontage would be along each side of the right of way. Uh, lot one would be 12.6 acres, and lot two would be 26.6 acres. Uh, both lots meet the requirements for the minimum upland requirement. Um, again, these roadways aren't probably going to be built. Um, it's just, again, to lock, lock the zone. So we did ask for waivers for most of the requirements for a roadway. Uh, we are asking for 18 foot gravel driveways um, or gravel roadways to be within the, the right of way. These are the two, two roadways with the slopes. Um, so Mitchell Way, the 2% slope. 344 feet to the back with an 18 foot gravel driveway and an 18 by 78 turnaround for a, a fire truck. And McDougal Way, 190 feet, same thing with the 18 foot gravel and an 18 by 78 gravel driveway. Uh, this one comes in at 2% and that is a 1% slope. Uh, so this is a little bit steeper. Um, this has been, you know, submitted, went through graves. He had some comments. Uh, we did address. His comments. Um, we haven't gotten him back to the plans yet because we just recently got uh, additional comments incurred. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any specific questions or if you wanted to talk about the mobility, you want to talk about Kurt's comment. Well, there are a couple of comments that Mike had that I thought maybe we could look at. Yeah. Um, uh, number five, for example, he says the plans. Do you have a 
Um, I, yeah, I've read. Okay. Just so you can yeah. reference you. Yeah. So the plans propose a cul-de-sac with a property line diameter of 120 feet consistent with the requirements of a flexible development. Uh, Graves understands that the application for a definitive subdivision the required minimum diameter shall be 146 feet. The waiver is not going to question. Is that an item that you've addressed in some way? I believe he's got that on the waiver requests. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure a waiver for that. Yeah, we're showing up here in 120. Yeah. Well, that would be the, the original submittal. Oh, yeah. That might you're, be. Jay, you're going to just add that to a ra waiver request? Yeah, we'll just add okay. it to a waiver. All right. I can't see on here where he labeled it. And then you'll obviously get that back to my people. Yes. Yep. See that. Um, number seven, uh, the plan creates four new lots. Uh, with some remaining land, GI believes that the entire remaining land should be shown in the plan for the calculated land areas? Yeah, he did um, expand this to show the, all the lots okay. all the way to, to the back. Okay. Uh, number nine, the grading and drainage of Mitchell Way should be revisited, as it is shown to be crowned, which may trap runoff on the upgrading inside of Brookfield Road. It appears that a grading and drainage system similar to that of the proposed McDougal Way cross, cross culverts is appropriate. So we'll have Mike look at that. Yeah. Uh, number 11, the plans do not include proposed sediment and erosion control measures or notes for the proposed work. is uh, number 15, waiver request. Uh, Mike Andrea notes that he requested various waivers and he doesn't have any engineering issues with those. Um, but for the board, if you had any questions about that. And then uh, you have a letter from Kirk as well, which is kind of uh, complicated, I think. And I don't, don't know if I can adequately explain it, but I'll take a shot at it. Um, on the mutual way, <coughs> there's an existing lot, lot on Assessor's parcel 16A3, which is less than 60,000 square feet required for the district. So it's a non conforming lot, but it is in common ownership with the adjoining land, which means that for zoning purposes, you need to combine the two lots to make a conforming lot. So, at the bottom of page one, uh, Kirk cites the section of the zoning bylaw, and the second clause is what applies here. On line four, it begins, the minimum lot area width and frontage shall be the sum of the requirements for the structure, and the minimum distance between such structure shall be the height of the higher building. So I think what he's just noting here is that there's a zoning compliance issue with the existing lot that has a house on it. Um, so he's saying on the last paragraph on page two, the planning board and the applicant need to be aware that the two areas referenced here will join under the merger doctrine of chapter 48, section six, paragraph four, as represented have the functional equivalent that required for separate lots in the zone. So under the Charleston Zoning Bylaw, it's fine to have two principal uses on a lot as long as you each you add the sum of what's required and the existing lot provides it, you're okay. But I think that presents a problem for selling the house lot at some point in the future if they wanted to do that because you couldn't sell that lot as it exists today because you have the remaining language as abstract to. So 
it's okay, I think, for the planning board, but it might present a problem for the landowner in the future. And now might be the time to, to reconfigure the lot layouts there yeah. so that that existing lot becomes a conforming lot without that remaining land. Yeah, does that make sense? I think That's we can kind of the way I understand. It's kind of yeah, I think we can just take, he's talking about this uh, lot being yes. combined with the solar project, it's already the old solar array that's here. Yes. Um, so we can just, you know, steal a little bit more land from lot B, add that to this, and then it would meet the area, I believe. Okay. I would advise that, I think it would, because Kurt's aware of it, and yep. that lot gets developed, I think it might come up. Okay. I don't know exactly how that would be flagged, but it might come up in a title search or something of that sort. Yeah, we can address that. Okay. 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 The existing solar is here. This is the new one you're putting in up there, right, right over there. Um, uh, there's nothing there. It's a future. Yeah, the other one is <coughs> actually up around it. Okay. They're requesting. Are they not? Okay. All the standard solar device from. And which we're being consistent with. That's something that's been waived on previous ones. Yeah, I think we did a Green Hill Sturbridge Road one, right? Yeah, and it's because it's not really going to be built, and we know that gives the intent, so I mean. Okay. But yeah, we did. For North Sturbridge Road, that, I thought there was a road actually that went in there. No, there was. What other ones did we waive this one? Do you remember? Colburn Road. Colburn Road. Colburn Road. 20 yeah. feet. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we can always have this medical back in. Probably the um, same mm -hmm. condition, I would think, right, as far as if it were to be a subdivision for potential, it would have to come back anyway. Right. Um, there was a, another issue that came up, not really re related to this plan, but to the solar project that's going on up there. If I can mention that now. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Uh, Linda Brunet uh, came in yesterday. She owns a lot of the very northwestern part. Can you point that out, thank you? Yeah. That one there. So she came in, I, she said she tried to make it tonight. She has some ambulatory difficulties, so I guess she couldn't make it. So she asked me to present her case. Apparently, uh, there's been, under the approved site plan for the solar project up there, there's been a lot of clearing going on. And she claims it's disrupted the drainage patterns so that she's getting drainage onto her property. Her driveway is right near that property line. Uh, so she says that it's been freezing up over the wintertime from that new water that's been flowing onto the property. So I sent that off to Jason yesterday, I think, and uh, we'd like you to comment on that and see, <coughs> see what your response is to that concern and, and what can be done about that. Um, so did you get the comment back today from I Bernie did. and Pete for you? Did you um, want me to get that out? What's that? Do you want me to get that out? Uh, no, I'm basically, okay. I, I, I was unaware of any problem. Um, just what they said was that the contractor and the conservation commission have been out there to, you know, check on it. Um, and I, you know, from what they are saying is that Todd said it's not anything to do from any work that's been done in the field. So, you know, I haven't been out there. I didn't, didn't know about it until yesterday, but that's what, you know, 
that's the email that came back from the solo. Will you follow up with Ty to see yeah. if just let me let me read Peter yeah. Forte yep. sees the construction supervisor. Uh, Ivo, Mrs. Kine has raised this issue with conservation previously. Todd Gerard met our contractor on site to inspect runoff in that area and reported that no runoff from the site. I'm happy to meet on site to inspect that area with you at your convenience to address any concerns. So it seems there's a discrepancy between what Peter's saying and what the homeowner is saying. So I'm happy to go out and inspect, or if you'd like, yeah. might go out. Check with Todd. And just verify with okay. Todd yeah, get, if, if, he okay. could, if he could just give us some, um, a memo or email or whatever, just to okay. kind of. Um, okay. Not that we don't believe every email. <laughs> well, I, think, I know yeah. that was a concern of hers in the beginning. Right. Um, mm -hmm. She said that there was already some water there, and she was afraid it was going to be worse. So. I don't think she'd be making it up. She wouldn't no, come no. in unless it was right. a real concern. I mean, concern it could just be really wet. It could be, you know, whatever. Just if there's an issue. Maybe it'll we'll settle down when it's seated and, you know, stabilized yeah. or something like that. So just make sure. Uh, yeah. can, you, can you and Todd just, in whatever you yeah, need to do, can sure. you just make sure that you do whatever you, if there's yeah. anything we can do to help her, mm -hmm. can you just sure. make sure. Um, do we have any more questions? <laughs> Do we want to continue it? Do we have a date? Um, we do. Be on an agenda that you have for the next week. So we can so February. Six. Would you be ready for February 6th, Jacob? Yeah. All right. So we have you down continuation at 7.30. Okay. I make a motion that we continue this to this public hearing to the 6th of February. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, so you have that. Yep. Okay, so we have a request to continue the next hearing. Okay. Hi, Bill. This is from TGA Solar um, on Carpenter Hill Road. Um, hi, Bill. I, have apolog I apologize for the late notice, but I'd like to request a continuance from this evening planning board meeting for the TGA um, definitive subdivision. It took me longer than I had anticipated to respond to the peer review comments, providing you with updated plans and drainage calculations yesterday, um, and mailing the same to grade engineering for peer review. I believe the continuance is necessary to provide adequate time for peer and town review of the recently submitted documents. Please advise to your next available agenda so I may schedule accordingly. Thank you, Frank. Um, from Frank Pacheri Engineering, Department Engineering. Do we do we have to vote to to the next meeting? Yes. Um, are they going to be on the sixth too? Yep. Um, I'd like to make a motion to continue uh, TJ Solar Pillar subdivision plan to February sixth. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So this ANR is from Driver's Land Survey for property owned by Joanne Pearson, John Miller, and Patricia Miller on North Main Street. Uh, to locate you, the town center is here, and all Stevens Road is here, so traveling north on North Main Street, it's on the right hand side, just a little bit before the intersection of L. Stevens. It's fairly simple ANR, simply taking this existing lot and making two lots out of it, both of which can, will conform to zoning. It's in the village district, which requires a 10,000 square foot minimum lot size, 75 feet of frontage. Uh, they both have that. There's also a statement here that they conform to the upland requirement uh, of the zoning bylaw. The only problem I had with this plan is that the 
subdivision regulations require a statement of that um, about compliance with zoning. And this plan does not have that statement. You know, we normally see that in some form on all of our plans. Um, so normally we ask for the following statement. Notation stating that no determination of compliance with zoning requirements has been made or intended. So if you think this is an approvable plan, I think you can go ahead and vote it. And I would just ask the surveyor to put that statement on the plan, and then I could sign it on your behalf. Does he need a statement, or is that zoning chart that's on the print make it understood or not? I think it's wise to put it okay, on the right, plan. Okay, all right. Because of Okay. It has all to right. do their own. We've made every, everybody else has done it, so right. it's okay. just not. Both are a minimum frontage for this? Is it 175 for both of them? What's 75? 75? 10,000 square feet. We don't know what the proposed use is for What is the zone for this? Village. Village. Okay. We don't know what they're doing up there. Is that just an empty lot now? I believe so. Right after this, where the sewer pump station is. You can see where it says existing. Oh, uh, right, sewer tank. Yeah, right, that's right. The caged in the cage. area. Okay. Yeah. So, I'd like to make a motion to approve the ANR. With the right, as long as the, with the condition that the okay. surveyor puts that writing for the, the zoning statement on the print. And that I'd be authorized to sign. And that bill okay. will be authorized to sign. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, he is. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm going to take up your hand on it. Okay, great. Great, I guess probably have you explain what you're proposing to do. Sure. No problem. This is Andy Smith. He's a resident of Charlton, and he's the gentleman that's going to be uh, taking over that portion of the property. Okay. Excuse my uh, coloring skills here, oh. but I, I did mark up the highlight, the lot division here to make it easy for the board to see what's going on. Okay. So basically, I mean, rain for rent, we, we have our, our own enterprise, and these buildings and their use, their current use, which there's not a planned change to the use, um, they kind of stray from our primary business. So um, we want to basically just uh, give them the frontage they need. And uh, that configuration, I think it's like four acres now. Uh, 4.39 acres, and that would leave us about nine. And um, that's, that's basically it. It's just a subdivision of the existing plot so that they can operate their business and operate ours. So both of these lots have access mm -hmm. frontage. Uh, an air sufficient area to qualify as separate lots. They meet all the zoning setbacks I take it with the buildings. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> now the site plan for the business didn't use any of that land. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. Was there was a part of the site plan that, that I'd like to show the site plan if you can yeah. if you would so that we can sort of see how it fits. <coughs> Yeah. You kind of already have the fences and you have you well to separate it that way. So Kurt and I went up and we, we drove through the area just to see if that A and R plan would affect the site plan at all. And we just had sort of one concern, uh, which really doesn't affect the A and R, but it's, it might have an effect on the site plan for rain for rent. So you've got 
about the gate proposed here, which is roughly along the property line. I don't stop now exact. And then a gate sort of comes down here with another gate going through here to allow more access in there. In the previous plan, there was um, an un unimpeded emergency access of fire vehicles to here. With this configuration and with the new fencing that will be put up, there's gravel portion of the way in here, which could, you know, a heavy rain event, it might, it might prevent fire vehicles from traveling down there. So I'd like to have Mike look at that and see whether it would be necessary to have that paved. Uh, and then there's sort of a very tight radius here, 20 feet, and Chris and I weren't sure whether fire vehicle could maneuver around this. So with, this, with the fence coming in, it sort of changes the traffic patterns through here a bit. So I, I think you would find go ahead and, and approving that, and we might just send a, a note or a letter to the to make the end saying we'd like to have our engineer review any of the effects on traffic and circulation. I think the fire should look at it too. The fire should look at it as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe just some minor field changes would be all that would be needed. I'm sure um, that's fair. But if they determine so. that as a significant change, then we'll have to come back to the board for a little bit. It looks to me like it could be handled sort of just as a field modification, depending on, on what they find. Mm -hmm. Greg, do you want to comment on that? Yeah. So fire will have the lock, we'll have the lock here, mm -hmm. and we'll also give it um, access mm -hmm. to this here, to this, mm -hmm. so that they will be able to get back this way as well. But how, how does the owner access <coughs> these buildings? This is going to be, uh, so they eventually have to your property then to get the yeah, yeah. but it's, it's gated. Right, that's going to be a electronic access yes, eventually. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll yeah, keep that. Okay. So then the only problem might be the sort of gravel area here that we need to look at. And I don't know whether that's going to change drainage calculations or whatever. So and there's no plan to change your use on, on the city. No. And the building's going to stay on, on the frame for one slot? The building, the existing building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the same. Nothing's changing there. It's changing. Are you still having a, a wash facility for your units? Uh, for trucks, for trucks. Yeah, yeah, the wash, wash bay. I mentioned that to the water and sewer superintendent yesterday, and he wasn't really aware of that, so he asked if you could call him to talk okay. about that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a number? Yes, I have. Okay. I did meet with him initially when we were talking about this. Mm -hmm. He might have forgotten. That we have that close okay. system. So right. I'll I mentioned it was refreshing. So I'll refresh it. Okay. So we're supposed to um, review and sign this. But what? What? It, what do you? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a signable plan. It meets the requirements for the AM. Okay, um, and, and the, the concern about the fire access, that'll be taken care of after it's signed, or is it something that? Yes, I think, okay. right, I'll have my. What would the fire department require uh, uh, besides a, I guess, a key to the gate, if, if that's all they require, or, or I would guess they require pavement all the way through? I guess if they feel that that. Existing base is inadequate for their fire vehicles. They might require some pavement or different okay. improvement to that area. I don't know. And, and they have control over that. That's that will have to be done, or, or I'm just worried about. Well, I think it might have to be done and not getting I done. Like, I don't anticipate getting any resistance to that if that's a legitimate fire concern. Okay. If there was, then I don't know what we deal with it then. I suppose. So is this going to go to the fire first, or we're going to approve it first? Well, I think you can approve it now. Um, there's nothing that 
you were limiting your from signing this plan? So this is just this is subdividing. Like this is just cutting their property in half. Mm -hmm. um, the issue by doing this, they're cha they're altering things on our site plan a little bit, turnarounds and stuff. So mm -hmm. if if we sign this, then th this kind of needs to have needs to might need to be tweaked to okay. meet, meet all requirements. So does it make it a little bit nervous? to go ahead and make this happen without having making sure that happens first. That's all I'm That's and, and I'm more worried about lot the, the, the lot leverage the, the new lot being up to code and up to I mean because there was no site plan approval <coughs> for for that. As a standalone, as, lot. As a standalone yeah. lot and a standalone business at this point you're dividing it up. Is there going to be separate yeah. ownership on these lots? Oh yeah. Okay. Who will be responsible for the overall development? Each party, or will they go in and do the, all the work on both lines? Um, I mean, if there's a, yeah, we're going to do all the fence. So Other than the fence around where the storage units are, that would be Andy's responsibility. Okay. And that's not going to go up right away, right? No. That fence will No, because the flea market. No, that that all just stays. It almost is the exact same fence that's there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of changes going on. All of this, as far as the, mm -hmm. yeah, the flea market and the right. storage, and that's it's part of the storage. Yeah. very little has been changed mm -hmm. there. But right. it's an ownership change, and the flea market mm -hmm. is now separate and different. So I'm just, I'm just wondering if did, would that require a site plan for that? No, it's, it's existing. Should, it's existing. Well, it's it's existing as a bigger lot. It's now separated into a, a completely separate lot. So with two different owners. With two different owners. But it's conforming and it's. The lots are to buy right. I, I, yeah, I agree. The lots are conforming. It's, it's the business now where it's sited. It, oh. it, there's some. There could be some some questions on on, on parking and, and access and, and those kind of things. We're, we're, we're taking half the parking lot away from that other business. All the parking like that, has been. That all of the calculations have been done. All the engineering has been done for that. For the and second lot, compliant for both. Right, both lots would have it. They're Separate parking required. Separately exclusive lot. Correct. Separate. 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 I just, I just want to, I just don't want to find anything if, if it's going to result in something else that's going to cause a problem. Um, <coughs> it's, I feel a little more comfortable if um, Mike signed off on the, the gravel piece and that was not creating a problem. Like, that just me. Um, I, 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 yeah. I, mean, I, I understand what you're, what you're saying. I think gravel's the wrong. It's not, it's. Regrind? It's regrind, and it's been there forever. Right. Um, it's so pretty solid. Yeah. But has has that been used for accessing the back part of that lot frequently oh, yeah. before, yeah, or, or it's been mainly through the Howlett parking lot? Uh, Not well, the other side of the Both. Well, on the weekends when the uh, flea market's packed, that, that, that your side of the parking lot is... Uh, is, is used and the, nobody's sinking in and people drive to the back building for the antique store and people go to store sheds daily through that thing, so. And they plow it, that's plowed, they've been plowing, Jillian's been plowing that forever, flea market, so. I'd like Mike to take a look at and have a third department sign off on that before we sign That takes an extra week. It's probably worth it. Mm. Would you like um, to hold off on a vote, or would you like to vote to sign if Mike says it's okay, or what would you We can that? make that a conditional approval, or? or, or mm. so, yeah, I don't know how you want to handle procedural. So if we, we if we go and sign and make it a condition that we get fire and mics. Well you can't really condition an A and our plan. Mm, that's 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 easy to conform. So that to that answer the question? Then we just move it we we move this to February sixth and, and by then we should have our answers and it's then yeah. we, you know, make it, it make it quick. Simple. It should be quick then. Right, so we have a letter from fire signing off on a letter from Mike and, yep, no yeah. and just say that it doesn't yeah. compromise the existing site plan that was right. previously approved. Sure. Yeah. And then we'll 
in any way or affect it. Yep. Yep. What's the time period that the board has to sign the ENR? 21 days. Okay. So that would expire by um, the next meeting. It would expire by the next meeting. Before the next meeting? Right. We have the yeah, four we meet last February 6th. We have the four days to next Submit it on the ninth. We do consent to continue that to the I mean, I've been held up on the five. Well, you, 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 you still have the building permit for your 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 for pushing a lot off and that's been a fun part of our development. <coughs> so so this was uh dated um, January eighth. So twenty one days being January twenty ninth. Right. So you know I mean consideration of the fact that we have you know we have done everything that this board has asked. Continue to do what is asked and run the proper payments. <coughs> I'm not looking to upset the cart. I'm, I'm just concerned with what Kurt brought up. If Kurt had said it was fine to begin with, but he made a point of saying that he doesn't know any questions, it was, is, that's, that's my only concern. I love Kurt's mm -hmm. saying. So, so, so we need well, to get it done before the the actions are, it's a signable plan, so you can go ahead and sign it now. And then we'll just um, make sure that that's taken care of at, you know, uh, through the normal routine inspection process. Uh, send the comment letters to Mike and to the fire department. And if they have any concerns, they can be addressed uh, directly in the field. Good. Well, before building permits. They've got a building permit already. Oh, they already have a building permit. Right. And they've got site plan approval, so work is underway. Approve the A and R. Second it with those conditions that. Um, with, with, with those, with, with that follow up on your right. side. Yeah, that's how. Right. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you want to sign this? Not the copy. You know, want the paper copy? <laughs> <laughs> so just one right. paper and one. One paper yeah. and one. Yeah. Sensitive to everything right now. We've been through a long couple months. <coughs> <laughs> hey, don't. We're not growing pot. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're not selling it either. <laughs> That's good. What are you zoned up there? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter in this town. From what I hear. <laughs> no, we are, we'll be approving probably an industrial zone marijuana cultivation probably within the month or two. We like pot, we just don't like it growing in the pot. Right. I don't even want to go. I don't want to go there. Let's hear too long. You just uh, one paper? Yeah, one paper. Thank you. 
That's a hard freeze. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Are they in already? Yeah. Yeah. He officially sold one of those on that meeting. Your garage full? Um, are you cookie mug? Yeah, the cookie mug. <laughs> It was always the cookie mom okay. uh, living in this tiled house. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. My kid wants to sell 500 bucks this year. She's like, whatever five she's going to wear. She's going to wear it. She's going to Okay, next, John and Zach. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Zach Couture, the HS, HS and T group. I'm here with John Walker. Um, this a &R that is in front of you guys tonight, this coincides with the special permit that was approved by this board a couple months back. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this land. Um, and what we did is uh, we ended up just combining all three now that the conservation land will have access off of Bolshev Road. Uh, so we ended up just combining all the three. But these are, these are the same exact plans you approved through the special permit process, but now obviously the A&R process, so Mr. Gunter can start selling off the uh, pieces of property. How many, how many cars? Cars? <laughs> Yeah. But there's a number of conventional lots, and then there's, I think, four or five reduced frame slots. So I've sort of marked up which ones are where the lots are, and then if they reduce furnished lots. And as Zach said, these are the, the same plan that he previously approved. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Walker, uh, if you're listening, he's proposing to purchase these two lots. And uh, these two lots. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. And, those two. and then Four. Two is five. we had negotiated with, Ms. with Dr. Gunter of the conservation land, yep. which you can see he's mm -hmm. marked here as a conservation area. And the Midstate Trail route is shown on, on the plan, uh, deeded uh, to this property coming out here. And we've provided uh, a allowance for a parking area here, mm -hmm. uh, showing the actual Midstate Trail route coming up this way. Um, so uh, this was a lot of negotiation yep. to get to this point. But uh, the only remaining concerns are at, at the end of Future Road, and John has been working very hard with um, Jerry Fox, the power superintendent and the fire department, to provide a turnaround on his property uh, so that um, when Jerry plows the street, he can push the snow around here and turn around. Mm -hmm. And for the fire department to come down there, they will turn around as well, should there be a fire at this end of the road. Uh, so I think we're making substantial progress uh, on that. Dr. Gunter has agreed to provide an easement uh, for uh, for that purpose. And, and John, as the potential purchaser of these lots, has agreed to it as, as well. Thank you. So it's just kind Thank of you know, working out the final details and dimensions and that sort of thing. I, I sent a sketch that John had prepared to the fire department today uh, to get their comments on it. So I think it's just a matter of satisfying everyone about the, you know, the requirements for the vehicles. Uh, so the principal we, we've got is just kind of the exact details. When that happens, uh, Zach will go ahead and prepare the legal documents we give the town an easement for that purpose, which we recorded, and give the town the permit to right put snow, turn around, that, that kind of thing. Jaguar. So if you're going to be the buyer here, you want to say it Sure. Yeah, what we're actually doing is, um, well, I'm actually buying this one, my son's buying this one, and then I'm going to buy these two over here. The only thing we intend to do is to build a house here, build a house here, and the rest would be for, like, recreation. So this way here, we can keep it all open, and we can do our trail riding or our archery or whatever right in this, this area here. The... Um, 
the turnaround, we've gone around and around in circles on different designs and everything, and we come up with one that seems to be pretty appealing to uh, Jerry Foskett at the uh, highway department. And I asked him, I said, well, where do we go from here as far as the uh, fire department? He goes, don't worry about it. The fire department most likely will, you know, go with that. I don't, he doesn't see why it, you know, wouldn't fly. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess, uh, Bill, you had sent I over, said to, over the, today, right. to the fire department. Okay. All right. And then uh, we're going to have an easement on uh, lot 25 and an easement on the lot 11 here, okay, in order to get that turnaround in there. Who owns lot 25? Mr. Uh, Mr. Gunter. Mr. Gunter, Gunter also. Yep. And uh, just to alleviate some concerns with the board, I know here in your last meeting, these are obviously being under special permit. There's a conditions with those special permits, so the board still has uh, say over kind of what's going on with the plan. So it's not like you're signing it and we're hitting the road. So there's still conditions of approval uh, that Mr. Gunter will have to do some road improvements. So this, you know, there's, it's still ongoing. So it's not like we sign this and you never hear from us. No pot farms, no motorcycle tracks. What's that? So no pot farms, no motorcycle no, tracks. No, no, no. Unfortunately, it's just going to be open land with a couple houses. Yeah. You know. The other thing this does is it puts the solar farm <coughs> on a conforming lot. It's a reduced finish lot, but it's a conforming, mm -hmm. so that solves that problem with it not being on its own lot. The other thing, too, is I've been talking to the uh, engineer for the uh, uh, National Grid, and he says right after, of course, these get approved, He'll go in and change his uh, plan in order to get the poles down into where I need them. So instead of having the poles come along here and then crisscross over here and then come back over here and then crisscross back over here, we've uh, uh, Mr. Gunther had approved to <coughs> once there's a pole right here is to go directly across the above uh, above ground to this house, which will enable me to put a pole in here in order to run. It straight down and then into the wall. So it makes it a lot better than having it all crisscrossing back and forth. Yeah, and at the same time, the uh, uh, National Grid said that they're going to be taking care of all the poles and all that stuff. Once this is approved, uh, which hopefully tonight, because I'm looking forward to those cookies, <laughs> <laughs> uh, once it's approved, then I get a hold of Morell at the uh, National Grid. He says it'll take him approximately two days to finish up the plan. Okay, so we can get going on this. Yes. I'd like to make a motion we approve the ANR plan. Second. 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 Favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is a three lot, or three paper plan, three section plan, so maybe a paper. This is one of each. Yes. That's one of three. Two or three. Okay. 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 <laughs> we got to get you a different color highlight. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some green or something. It's tough with that amount of land. Typically, we don't have that problem. We usually put it all in one sheet, but that's quite a bit of quite a bit of land. There. Get 
<laughs> yeah, we didn't make it easy on you. Sorry about that. That's stuck in my line. So my Oops, sorry. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. What's the zoning district? Uh, I believe this is agriculture. Uh, yeah, agriculture. The zone line down there, R40. This is the line. Multiple we buildings. Okay. Like okay. 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 Lots of both of multiple buildings. That's, oh, that's an interesting. That's why. It's, it's, just, a, it's just accessory, like okay. our sheds. property 
is on the corner of Osgood and North Servage Road. Um, some of the remaining land that this is an island owns still. Uh, lot 67 and lot 68, both in our 40 zone. Uh, both have 100, well, 68 has 150 feet of frontage. 67 has 228 frontage. Uh, both lots have over 40,000 square feet and there are no weapons on the property. This is actually cut off of a larger piece of land over here. Uh, there's about 20 acres or so left. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, any other questions? Nothing on the I can offer you further. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> extension request for Yankee Crossing, 16 Worcester Road, Charlotte Mass. I re Dear Jane, I respectfully request a 12-month extension for the site plan approval of the above-referenced project from the Town of Charlton Planning Board for the period January 20, 2019 through January 20, 2020. Um, regards, Steve Green, Forever Hopeful LLC. That's what we're doing. That's why I was like, I'm not getting that. That's where they're done yeah. Well, it's done. What's going to happen up there? I don't know. Why? I'd like to make a motion. We approve the extension. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 How old is the site plan? I'm just curious. How long has that been going? It's been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah. Extension. Extension. Yeah. Yeah, what are they going to? They just keep it filming it. They'll ask someday. Forever hopeful. Forever hopeful. Um so we have um let me go over let, give me a second to go over um a couple of things that I had on my punch list. And then we'll go into the planning director. Is that all right? No. Um, so, um, number one, we ha recently had the request for the public in the public information request. So, there's a town hall policy um, that there's an official person to go through. There's a form to fill out, and they have it's Mary Dublin and Love and Favor are our designated public record. Uh, officials, um, but there I know many government offices, municipal offices have a 
policy to provide paper copies and not electronic copies. And it goes back and forth. Everybody has different opinions. Um, but if you talk to any attorney, the attorney always says you should be giving people paper. You shouldn't be giving people electronic copies. It's just the way that it is. So I'd like the board to kind of take that stance and actually make it a board policy that we will provide printed copies. Um, and then if the public record officials have promised electronic copies to, um, they can scan them and send electronic copies, but I think we should be able to print and make sure that what we have is, what we're submitting is appropriate. And what's the reason we have that? Um, I, it's a, I ask any attorney, you should, you should read and, you should print and read what you're giving people. Just in case there's something in there that's um, uh, uh, talking about staff or something that may um, right. insult somebody or, or be taken, there might be something that you want to redact, and it's very hard to do that electronically. Yep. Also, when you send, when you forward somebody an email, they can forward that and, and change mm -hmm. some of your original email, sure. okay. and then trying to that that's just messy and dirty, and it's much better to. to it's a good policy to do paper copies. I get same trees. I get yep. that at the end of the day, we should think about um, the legality of it all yep. and to make sure that we're not doing it, we're not causing any problems that we shouldn't be causing. And I'm not saying we're hiding something. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. sometimes you're you're within emails with a heading. You're changing the subject and you're saying, "Oh, did you hear?" Mm -hmm. There's yep. certain things that don't need to be. We should make sure we review that completely. Um, this time we just complied and sent the electronic, but I was talking to a couple attorneys about this and mm -hmm. they said, wow, electronics cut something that you probably should, should, it, should it do. Okay. Um, okay. So I'd like to just from now on, we should, I don't know if we, it, it, we, it, if we need to vote on as an official policy, but I'd like to. I think we should. Yeah, uh, we can make a motion we adopt the policy. If, if anyone provide, ask request for public information, we provide it in print. Second on paper. Any discussion? Any discussion? No. All approved? <laughs> um, yep, aye. 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 Um, all in favor? Um, um, number two, I was going, I know we are asking for. Um, Funding in the budget to go over our zoning bylaws, our subdivision regs, the whole, like mm -hmm. our whole the zoning map. Um, if I know that we all have tons of free time on our hands, but in the meantime, if we want to start on our own, on our own, um, having a hard copy or electronic copy and going through and highlighting and questioning and writing notes, personally, things that we've noticed. I mean, I have my own that I've been kind of taking notes, things that don't agree, things that I find it confusing when I read. So if if we want to all take a, a gander, mm -hmm, like, if, sure. you know, just, you know, do a page when you're, when you, when you're, when you're bored, when you sit in the doctor's office, where you're, but whatever, um, just to take a stab at it. Because if there's anything specific that we might want to, it's very important that we might want to get into a warrant and change at the, town meeting coming up, we don't have <coughs> so much time to do that. There yep. might be, like, yep. we don't ha we don't actually have the, we should maybe look at the definition of our horticulture and floriculture. We should probably look at anything in um, that, that goes against our new marijuana zone. We should, if there's anything in particular, we should bring it up and discuss it and try to get, you know, bring it to town meeting. But even if we don't do that, we should start doing it because I, I'm hoping we do get that in our budget and so we can work with our consultants and they might not see the same things that we see. So, um. Certainly you have a lot of day-to-day -day experience with that that a consultant might not realize. Yeah. So I think it's really helpful for everybody to go through it. Yep. I think so. We, disagree with we know that, that over the past right. 12 to 24 months, a lot of stuff's been exposed. Right. As far as where the deficiency are, mm -hmm. we see it. And, mm -hmm. You so. know, tighten up the, the definitions in the areas sure. that mm -hmm. we. Um, um, do you want to uh, have a word document to do that, or would you prefer just to? 
extend your thoughts about it? I think we we'll chalk it down. Yeah, I, th I, I think that's fine. Um, <clears throat> We can all yeah. we can get it in Word. It's I know it's available. Yeah, um, it's available online and, and in, yeah. I um I have I have, a, I have the hard copy stuff. books because I think it's so much easier to, to <coughs> highlight yeah. stuff. But yeah. it's it's totally you whatever. That, and you, please no, sure. too, yep. read, sure. you know. Um, I think I say terms. This definition of terms have changed over right. 100 right. years. Right. Yes. You're right. 100 so years ago, it meant dog's one thing. Dog's not a dog. Can't. <laughs> and then, it's true, yeah, it and I mean, yeah. we used to be, a, we were, you know, a farming community, and so, so you know, um, and clearly, when we we do get to the point where we have, hopefully, have, get our budget for the for a consultant, we really want to look at our zoning maps too. So, again, if you have it um, spread out on your dining room table, like I do, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to start drawing on it, um, just so we're prepared mm -hmm. to come to the table and, and get things done. Yep, that makes sense. Um, um, minutes. There's a bajillion minutes that haven't been done because we've been so incredibly busy. Now, we need to get them done. And I don't, I don't know how we can make Jane not do what she's doing mm -hmm. and do her minutes. So uh, we have we do have a little bit of money and I was hoping that we could bring in well, ZB yet, was it, who has is it? So, so she does for She does minutes for them. So, she, so she, works Tuesdays. she just she just puts a couple of hours in and just does their minutes. Um, if we could use some of our uh, of our budget to help catch up, because if we if if Jane does it, then she can't do the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. And they already they already have an agreement. They have an hourly rate that that she does she's work. she's doing it. So. Um, and she, it, did you actually reach out and see if she would be interested yeah. at all? Yeah, she said she will. So okay. can, can we have a, a vote? Um, I make a motion to go. So we get Second. In favor? Aye. Do you want to, well, is it, is it, sorry, just sorry, discuss it a little bit. Um, is it an open-ended thing, or is it? Is there a certain time frame that we wanted to do from January to, to December, or, or is yeah, it, let's, I mean, let's, 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 I, I think I feel better binding it a little bit. Okay, so let's do it to get up to date to where yeah. to where we are, so. Or it's manageable. Yeah, okay. um, yeah so. It's not gonna be forever. Sure, no, that's no. that's what I'm, yeah. I'm saying. No. Um, yeah, so yeah, maybe, maybe to January 1st or something like that. Yeah, so from whatever it's back to January 1st, so, and then. Yeah. 2018. Uh, we're not missing much before that, right? It's just 2000. The only, I only had a couple of that I had. Yeah, this, this yeah. that I this, had a this, records this. request that I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just so yeah. 2018 records. That sounds good. Um, we have. I've asked um, multiple times about the. We all know that we used to have a full-time planner and Jane did her job with somebody who worked 40 hours. We have a consultant because of the rate and the salaries, we can really afford 20 hours. So Jane's really been stepping up and, 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 and technically with all the things she's been doing, she's really been working on it for a grade. So what, is, what has been happening in the town hall, and other people have left, and you can cite specific examples that what they, they calculate it. They say, for this many months, you've been working out of your grade. So they kind of give you a check to make up for it because union rules, I mean, you, you, you have some responsibilities, but she's definitely working mm -hmm. clearly out of her grade. Right. Um, and other um, uh, administrative assistants in the building have got that calculation, but, but we're in, in the 16th month now. 15th. 15th month of Ellen being gone. So mm -hmm. I think we, need, we, shouldn't, we're not, we shouldn't wait another six months before we get that calculation done. They should probably calculate that. Yep. And I don't know how who we ask or what we need to do to follow up with that, but we really need to. And there is a precedent and it's been done before. It's been, so I know, mm -hmm. I mean, you can talk that a couple people have gotten, have gotten yeah, checks. Working on class. Three different, three different people in the building. Yep. There's been three instances in the building that has happened when, when directors have left and they've had to kind of fill in the blanks. Um, and I assume there's already a standard calculation. Seems like it should be an easy discussion. Right. I mean, it's. I mean, if not, there's a union issue, and then. Right. So, it's it's not. I just want to make sure. I don't want to wait for two years. We're already waiting for 15 months. I'd like to get it. Well, can we like put in a request from the day it happened through today's date, and then with an open end that we can come back from today until. Right. Or at, at when as at when they calculate it, or like right. when they calculate it, and then we can move ahead. 
um, maybe they can make it easier by just paying you at the the grade that they think you're working in. Um, whatever, I don't, right. whatever is easier for them to, to, to do, but I don't, it, again, I don't know how we go about kind of making that happen. So is it something that we should send to Robin or something, maybe Jessica, she's HR? Yeah, send HR, send to Jessica. Um, um, from the board and we can all sign it. Yeah. Okay. So who, who, um, how, do, how do we want to build that? Will you send... <coughs> something to Jessica. Can you it, can you copy the can you copy Robin and copy the cha the chair of the select board? Just because that's how I'm told that we should be doing things. Um, to have them come, uh, you know, please figure out the calculate. The, you know, they're the, they know what they're doing. I I just want to make sure that it gets done. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm almost done. Promise. So we got the conflict of interest email that we all have to read and sign. Um, but Jane gave everybody yeah. copies, yeah, the high yeah. copy poly in your packets. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even have it in your packet, so you can <laughs> read it. It's fine. Um, sign stuff. Okay. Sign the last page. So yeah, it's just, just the last page, page is just page that you're saying that you read it. You know, I think I turned this into Karen. Did you already? One. She emailed that out, right, Karen? Did you already Clark? gave it to him? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good. All right, I'll check. I'll, you know, I'll do it I again. remember seeing it was a different guy. I remember taking the okay. class. I just so, did this. Oh, so you already did it? Okay. You did it? Well, so, I did it because I had to. It was part of the. Yeah. Part of the. Uh, okay. If, you're, that, if she already has one, that's yeah, fine. I'll do it twice. I yeah, just want to. They have that. Make sure they have that. So that's the in, that's the annual one, and then you have to do the video. You have to sit there and watch that yeah. that really fun. Um, okay. He'll tell you when. Yes, yeah, so we'll get the email. Let us know. Yeah. Um, don't take bribes. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> gifts, even if you're going to get accused of it. <laughs> but you can buy girls' style cookies. <laughs> um, the other one is the campaign contribution. So I've been on this board forever and ever and ever since I've been a young child. Um, we got that's the first time ever I got the campaign contribution yeah. thing. So started that last year. Um, so if we should fill that out, I just <coughs> gave mine to Jane right now. To yeah, um, I did. I gave mine to Karen already. So we should, I think we're yeah. supposed to date it from the last time we. Did one which is my first seventeen years ago, and so and up to up to the date that you sign it, and then we'll start getting in anyway. I know there's a real big deal this year about who's getting campaign contributions, so um, it's probably going to be a strict. Um, even if on. even if you're self financed, you still have to fill it out. Mm -hmm. cool. you for what you spend. And your own. I didn't spend. Anything. I'll get those dates. For you. Okay. Thank you. And I think that's it for my well, does it have the form. Oh, you mean the other one? The campaign contribution? Yeah. Oh, the, uh, this one's still there. Oh. I have caddies. Oh, um, okay. It was emailed, so. Okay. Here's yeah. my conflict of interest if you need it. I, okay. I've already signed one before, but I don't know if it's needs to be done every year. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right those yes. ones do every those ones come every yes. year. I though. put my name at the top okay. and then I sign them to just okay. Okay. I'll make sure you get it. I'll pour it to you if they do okay. um, The only other thing is the uh, IT. Look at it. Okay. So I think it's reached out to <coughs> Robin and I also asked Jane to kind of do some research. Um, we, I think we should all probably have town emails. Um, I know there was some in, there was some issues um, about the, the how personal these emails are because remember we're all elected officials and no one should be looking at our emails. N nobody without our express permission. So the the email policy in town, if you read the policy, it pretty much says using this email means anybody that that so anybody the select board, R Robin the IT guy could open them up and look at them. If you read the policy and it. it I mean, it might not say it in so many words, um, but it really kind of takes away everything. And I kind of don't like that policy. It kind of, it, I, because we're elected officials, I'll share anything, 
but I think we should get a notice if they're going to request our, they're all on the server anyways. It just kind of feels weird that um, not elected paid, officials. paid employees for elected officials. Right, so it's a little bit different. But um, having that being said, we should probably have a, a board policy that we, we use our, um, we use town emails for town business. Um, if you, if people in the public, um, they love pot, they don't love pot, they love, they, you know, they love mushroom farms, whatever, they send you those emails. If they send them, they send you on your personal email, no big deal, but really when you're doing kind of public business, when you're responding um, to get those emails. I've asked for it, like some sort of instructions sheet, because we all have multiple emails working in, in home. To, an instruction sheet to be able to put that, and as soon as you need permissions, to put that email on your phone so you can get it with your other email. That hasn't happened yet, but that's what I've asked for. The, some sort of instruction yeah. sheet to make sure to, that to how to set it up. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know if when you when they brought you when they, uh, gave, yeah, when they didn't give you anything. So, so um, we're going to look more, but I think that also should be our, we should be have we should have a policy that official business again people sending you an, an email yep. they hate you they love you whatever yep. and your personal really big deal about for when we respond and we're dealing with any like the, any things we're hearing and voting on, we should make sure we use ours. So they should have it, because there's, there's plenty of other people here that have mm -hmm. town email. Yeah, well, well, they, they said just they, don't I have probably it. had yeah. one set up for me yeah. 100 years ago, but yeah. I just yeah. never, we just never yeah. use it. There was a lot of questions. You just need the incoming outgoing server. And, and, and I know that the select board are working on policies and procedures, like working on things within, and when they start doing them, I'll, we'll all, we can all chime in on the email policy, really there should be some sort of a written, the only reason you should ever need to look, open anybody else's email is if there's a public information request. So, and that should be gone. Like, yeah, it, it, should, it should be only your town of Chowton email. It should only be your right. town of Chowton email and it should, and there should be, you should be notified. Someone should not just go in there and pull out every, you know, because again, for that personal. Yeah, what happens if they actually happen, not actually, accidentally happen? Right, exactly. So there, I, I, just so that's why I wanted to make that fact known. It, it, it really pretty much assign your life away on that. Um, it, a private business would be different, but it's not a private business. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, um, because they really do love my emails. I'm going to send an email to the select board and mob and say, the the policy makes me uncomfortable. I do think we should use emails, but we we, we really want to work on making it so, again, we're public officials and employees should not be reading public official emails unless it's there's a reason be behind it. Do you want these policies to be written down and maybe created in some kind of a binder or something like that or posted on the website? We kind of want to be sort of voting on policies, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't know sure if we need to post it, but there should, be a should. Part, there should be a record of... We should, we should, we should have, a, we'll have it in the minute. So, yeah, yeah, we'll start a planning with policies, and as we go, we can... Sure. I think it would we be helpful. Be, okay. We can yeah. be really... In one uh, place. Right. Yeah. We can be really official. Right. Can the IT guy that we have for the town, can he help set us up on our phones to get that? I can You'll, help you. Okay. Well, I asked for like an instruction there should sheet. Be, there should be an instruction because it might yeah. be you might need to have to like sometimes you need a, you need like certain IP addresses. Sometimes you need things in you your phone. You need to know. You need an incoming server and outgoing server and ports for each mm -hmm. password. And user. Yeah, high tech. I'm setting priority. Yeah, yeah. 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 the iPod. So. <laughs> you need stuff you type in so you can push a button and get it. Right. That was yeah. that. Yeah. So I just told you it combines everything else. Sorry. <laughs> I can type and push a button. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, the um, cleaning director. So, <sighs> so no, nothing here back from the, the one that canceled? No. <laughs> No, and then we have, yeah, that's the... Uh, is he still waiting for a call back from us, or is he... I could get in touch with him. If he's, See if he's still uh, interested. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to get in touch with him tomorrow. Okay. And then we have another one. Um, yep. And the new one looks interesting, too.
He's currently the who was the director of, yep. of planning and economic development. I mean, we thought his current position might be helpful from an economic development perspective. Yeah. Seems to have some marketing experience, which is a lot of what a PG director would do is to move mm -hmm. out to town, so that could be of a benefit as well. So really, from 2012 to 2014, then 2015 to 2018, kind of a little bit moves around a lot, but it has some good years. Definitely, I definitely, definitely worth phone screening and talking to about uh, what his, yeah. his experience is. Absolutely. So you, have to, uh, yep. you want to set that up for sometime next? What do you think? Probably available next week. If needed. Or the week Why don't you talk to him? Just do a phone call right. first or invite him in? Well, for I mean, they're, they're close well, enough. He's pretty, he's pretty um, close. So. Forty-five minutes. Yeah, I mean, we we could. What another thing we do is we could do a five-minute phone call too, and then you know talk to him and, and see what his interests are, what his hopes are, ambitions and dreams. The five-minute phone call just to long way. yeah, just to just get a feel for it. Yeah, and then you know that that doesn't have to be even officially. You could do that in five minutes and just talk to him. Yeah. And then we can bring him in for a, a quick interview and then bring him in for the, the full interview if that's necessary. Or do you think from a phone screen you can get enough information out of it? I think from a phone screen you can get to see the communication skills and the, mm -hmm. and the person, a little bit of the personality. Yep. So, yep. Um, yep. do that and I will. Um, that's easy, that can be done anytime. The car on the way to Boston or something. Mm -hmm. so Poor Jane. She gets tortured with those. <laughs> I'm like, so, that's so, so I have two hours of no. Patrick, do you want to do that, that screen or do you want to come in and do it together? Or what, what? Um, I mean, if, if it's just going to be a, a call with some, you know, you know, why do you want to work in childhood kind of thing. Then, sure. um, and can I, can I, and, I'll, and see what nights he would be available so we could kind of chat and then maybe it, it could be another communication to kind of yep. set, up a, yep. set up a date or something yep. like that. So yep. the, really the reason the call is to yep. say, is to, to set up an interview but have that. Yep. Okay. Yep. And for the first candidate, did you want Jane to get back in touch with him and invite him in? Yeah, if he wants to come, if he wants to come back. I mean, okay. can, it's weird that he didn't reach well, out again, but. So we got another job, let's. How many that phone calls? See, please. And they'll work on the phone. Okay. Well, um, no, Patsy, you're gonna you're gonna do the phone screening for the second candidate, right? Yeah, only okay. for the only for yeah, the, the second yeah, person. Okay. That we just. I like that he typed it all out too. No, it just says so. Yep. Really? It does, doesn't it? No, it does, yes. Um, we have discussion, um, uh, growth management stuff. Um, I sent you the DLTA application. Yep. Um, this was actually prepared by Ron Barron at Team RPC as sort of a follow-up to our request to have you know, the CDP do a zoning diagnostic under their ELTA program. Mm -hmm. They actually decided to sort of see if they could make this more of a regional model kind of a program rather than just something for Charlton. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene is on the committee, the physical development committee. Um, can explain mm -hmm. their, their <laughs> desires, but as I understand it, they like to do things more of a regional nature than individual communities so that it has apples applicability to more than just one town. Right. So they saw this as a way to sort of create some kind of a pilot or a model 
type program that other communities might benefit from. What is the, so I don't, I guess I don't understand exactly what they're going to, they're going to, so, Zoning diagnostic is a comprehensive examination of all sections of the, of, of the town zoning pilot. Is that kind of, but that's kind of what we're, we want to do anyways. What, what right, different? Right. This could be part of that where we won't have to spend this is least expensive. So, so pretty much they'll come in and they'll kind of say, this, this doesn't agree or this definition isn't clear. Mm -hmm. And then in reality, like, we could go into a word and fix it and fix it ourselves. Right. Well, I think it's really to identify deficiencies right. without actually proposing Change. language to correct them. So I, I think they would come in and talk to the planning board, to myself and the building commissioner, or maybe the ZBA, um, just to sort of scan the bylaw and get a sense of what the major problems are. The other thing that they would do is to look at the long-term planning documents, the master plans, for example, and see if the bylaw actually advances those goals or conflicts with the goals. Unfortunately, the master plan is a decade old. Right, I know. So mm -hmm. that would be, uh, it's tricky for them to do, but I think well, they, no, they would ask the board about that. I mean, you know? how much different is the master plan really going to be, right? Other than, so it says it wants, we want lots of development on Route 20, mm -hmm. and we want to really build up the downtown. The village put sidewalks in, make the downtown walkable. Mm -hmm. How much more? How much different is that gonna truly change? I mean, it's not. Mm -hmm. So maybe it won't be that big of a right. deal. So, do you want to explain the process for how this gets acted on? Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow night that we will be reviewing. I think sixteen. applications like this <coughs> and each one will have a dollar amount attached to it and we will take a look at them and see what we can do if we can do it if it's feasible or not feasible and decide on it mm -hmm. and I think it was overwhelming $230,000 say out of $250,000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah, they do have a, a second round, but it would be much smaller. Very small, yes. Um, okay. But they're trying to get this one so that, because a lot of these have to be completed by the end of this year. And not, they have to be completed by the end of this year. And that's why they're trying to get this calendar year, year or year? December 31st. Calendar year. Yeah, calendar year. So um, these, these cost <coughs> estimates, are the cost to the town, or this is the cost to the it's a uh, CLTA is a state program where the state provides regional planning agencies with money to okay. provide services to town. So okay. it's not a grant to the town, but the cost is covered by the DLTA okay. program. Okay, so this isn't a cost to the town. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. There's no match requirement. I saw the bill there. Also. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they like to see the town buy in, so <coughs> you know, I would be looking at them and yep. uh, the board could have me the information. Does this need any action by us? Because I see on the last page. Uh, requires letter of commitment. Yeah, I sent a letter to you. Uh, okay. I don't know whether you have it in front of you now. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I remember seeing um, that by you. But if you so vote, we'll okay. have Patsy and Jean sign it. Right, perfect. And if you can't carry it, you can sign it. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally sure they get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think it sounds great. <coughs> I think it's yep. great. Yeah, it's we, we desperately need it, and we'll take any help we can get, especially if it's not at a at a cost, and it'll allow us to um, more likely be able to bring, because actually bringing someone to do the kind of legal side after we, we, know, we identify the problems should be a little cheaper than bringing in someone to do everything. So I think right. this is huge, um, and hopefully we we get it because um, so we're in, we're competing against the, like many other towns. Mm -hmm. right? Right. Yes. Apparently, a number of other towns have had similar requests, sort of mm -hmm. by coincidence, or just they're also experiencing the same kind of problems and looking for assistance. So it seems a really timely application. Yeah, us being in the papers a lot lately will help. <laughs> sure, please. Get the we have some get the legal setting vote. lawsuits out there right now. <laughs> Set some good precedent. Yeah. Yeah. What do they usually do? Do yeah. they usually yeah. deny or give okay. you partial? Yeah. Or yeah. They, they can do the whole thing as you present it. They can feel that maybe let the money spread out a little bit more, they can 
So you get this. Give you less than what you have, but still something to, to work with. Um, do we have a motion to? For, for I thought we already made a motion to, to go ahead and do this whole application. Well, I we don't can. think you have the actual written document that they prepared. I guess prepared, we so. have a motion for. Um, to, to sign the document yeah. to do the motion. Uh, we have Patsy and Jean sign the document for this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have this folder. Keep it empty now. Just keep it full. <laughs> that was my conflict of interest. In so, can we circle back to the planning director again? Mm -hmm. um, is this still advertised? Do we know? Yeah, it has is to be. It something has to be advertised. <laughs> is it still advertised? Way. Is is it still on the CM? CMRPC? CMRPC and site and the AMA yeah. site, and do we know if... if um, they expire. I think they go for 30 days. Yeah, so, so I, I suspect that they're no longer on their website. So we should we probably that. be some of them. Yeah, and do we, you know, I, I, I brought it up to, to Robin in the all, you know, boards meeting that we wanted to put it on Indeed but couldn't because we didn't secure a, a credit card to be able to do it. She said, call me and I'll make sure it gets taken care of. So. Robin's behind us on, on getting us something to allow us to okay. post it on Yeah, but it'll on be on the free, the free yeah. Yeah. Yep. But I guess there, yeah. it, there might be. The advertising is a little bit different if you pay for it. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, I think it's more targeted if you pay for right. it. But yeah, you can submit right for you. Right, yeah. rather than exactly. They, they do more targeted stuff right. and, and people that okay. have resumes posted on there. or It'll find them for you instead of them finding you and stuff. So, you know, at this point, we're a year into it. Let's be aggressive. Let's, we, we need to get aggressive. It's, it's something we need to get the good big quality March in here. training coming up. So March 16th is the the annual um, planner training. And you so want to kidnap somebody there and bring them back to Charlton? I, I do plan on doing that. Come um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> on, Can you come look at my car? There's <laughs> <laughs> something in the trunk here. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay, <laughs> might work. <laughs> they, have, they have those syndromes that you really stop liking your kidnapper. I mean, <laughs> Stockholm <laughs> syndrome, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, girls go <laughs> Um So, uh, first of all, anybody who wants to go, we always pay for everybody on the board to go to that training. It's they have all from very beginner to very advanced, and I'm sure some of the subjects. Just, um, some of the classes will be all about the new laws and probably all marijuana changes and everything else. Um, I've, I've, I've gone a couple of times and I haven't gone in a couple of years, so I want to go this year. Um, it's a great, they provide a great lunch. Like, it's, it's, it's I mean, it, I only mean, really choose conferences at work. Joe so based on the spread. Based on location. But, yeah, it's, but all the planners, the pretty much all the planners, planning boards, um, uh, everybody kind of involved in this kind of stuff is there. It's a great place to network. You can really get some, um, uh, meet some great people, and all the planners are going to be there. So I figure, um, I don't know if I can yeah. make some little business cards and say, we're looking for a planner, um, and, and, and actively recruit there. Um, at least let people know that we're so wonderful to work for. Um, and that's at the Holy Cross. Um, and it's this year it's the 16th. Um, it's Saturday. It's usually it's from like, like, like 8 to 8. 16th of March. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. Um, 263. But you get to choose all the classes Check you want to so you wanna do and stuff. So should I call? Definitely worth it. Um, it's, it's too soon. It is really, really a good. I, every once in a while you'll get an adult speaker, but the speakers are good. They, they're all active in the community, um, lawyers and all things, things, things that you can bring back. Mm. Are okay. bills in now? Yeah. Do just here. All right. So, did everybody get the email about the uh, special time election? 
Can you join real quick? Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, you signed one. Just wanted to make sure. I think school lets school to without being reached while I'm staring at us. Yeah. We only not have a camera. No, we don't. The camera's okay. Do we have anything else in Rose? I have two other things. Mike did a site visit report at the coffee shop at Seven Brookfield Road. Um, I have it before you can look at it. It's got it's some photos of the of current work that's going on. He's very pleased with the way progress is going. They've been working hard. Um, it's consistent with the site plan. It's got a few minor things they still need to do, but it seems to be working out pretty well, and I think uh, it probably won't be long before they uh, complete uh, the, whole, the whole project. It's kind of a small project anyway. I thought they withdrew that one. I thought they had decided not to do the, the car lot there. Didn't they? Did, did they the dream that? Oh, the coffee shop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Where is this? Oh, this is next to Country Bank? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Looks like the old coffee shop. Got it in my mind. Looks like it's going to be cute. Yeah, it does. Then the last thing I had was the um, um, town administrator wanted us to uh, respond to this request from Mrs. Benjamin regarding the public records request. Uh, and she states, I also request that the fee be discounted by the same percentage that was extended to Jerry Russell, as it appears to be the going rate for public information on this particular project. I believe I heard 90% reduction was offered at a recent board selection meeting. Um, so we had calculated the cost for Jane and I to uh, prepare the email, something in the order of $235 or something of that sort. Um, and so we were able to charge $25 um, per person, unless if it's uh, the rate is less than $25, you charge that person free. But however, our contract rate is $60 per hour, but we can only charge $25. So we were already discounting that cost by $35 mm -hmm. for yes. every hour that I work on it. So I don't know whether it's justified to provide a further reduction in, in the time and effort. It's been a significant mm -hmm. effort. We estimated And that's a low cost. If you looked at right. some of the emails that went back and forth for the other public requests, the original amount was $30,000. So a 90% <laughs> a ninety percent um, right. decrease in that is still a huge Amount. And that was the original. This the selected mm -hmm. was going to cost thirty grand to get all their emails. So um, we're at two hundred. I think we have. We're we're pretty cheap. Um, and you guys got all got my email. Um, I I the official record keepers are uh, Mary Devlin and Bobby Craver, and I I didn't want to use our staff to do their job. I think that we all have hats, and that's mm -hmm. not one that these guys wear. So um, if you have emails and you need to send them, um, again, we talked about the paper policy, but it's fine tomorrow. Um, go ahead and send them to Mary or Robin. They are the ones that need to put them together and provide them to the Benjamins. Uh, we are, we, we're not using our staff for the record request because that's not part of their job description. Um, and I also feel very uncomfortable using the taxpayers, the town, the town's, um, they, they, they pay bill to do, to do planner work. Mm -hmm. and they don't pay him to, 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 you know, to get emails. We pay him 60 and then he's going to get paid 25 It's like we're not providing that service. So it just makes sense that the public record keeper yeah. manages that that process. They right, if it. you're going to package it all together, I mean, I'm sure the selectman had 
emails regarding that as well, right? Are they didn't, if that wasn't part of their request, it was only us. I think just us. In no, the no, anything that I've already sent you, I'd have to resend it to them. Okay, all right. They took care of what they said. Okay. But, but they are the official record yeah, right. keepers, and right. um, I just want to make sure that we do things correct. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's kind of silly that we send it to them and they send it to them. Right. Yeah. It's 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 using our time, which we don't get paid for at all. Yeah. Right. And then it's using their time to send back. It's just it's it's inefficient. Um. So just so I went ahead and sent like all my fifty to Mary cool. because yeah. um, they it's said anything I send, I always see see. Yeah. So yeah. And anything, that, and anything yeah. that came from Bill or Jane, they are providing. They're providing. So pretty much right. it was pretty. It's pretty simple. <coughs> No, that's that change your anything else? No. Okay. Aye. Anything else? Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.